Hello and welcome everyone to our today's webinar about trends and challenges with e-commerce visuals in 2023 and beyond. I'm Alexandra, Experience Marketing Lead here at Pixels, and it's my pleasure to welcome you all here today. Thank you so much for sharing how is the weather like in where you're tuning from. I'm really happy to hear that it's unreasonably warm in New York City. I miss that town so, so much. Uh, well, Today, we have a very exciting topic, and it will evolve around the results of our annual e-commerce visual trend report that we've conducted here at Pixels by serving a strong pool of creative professionals. But to add extra value to our today's webinar, we have invited our special guest, who I will introduce in a few moments, and we also want to learn from you. Everybody in the audience, you are a creative professional and you contribute a lot to the industry and you face the challenges and you observe trends that are evolving on a daily basis. So we want to hear your thoughts today and uh, we want you to do it by joining the interactive tool that is called Slido. And you can do so either by scanning the QR code that I'm showing now on the screen or also by clicking the link that I'm dropping right now in the chat. So you can either participate on your phone, which will be very convenient, or you can also use a separate tab in your browser and uh, kind of switch in between while we're talking. Well, also you can use the chat as you've already found out. And I've seen that some people have already used the reactions, which we always love when our audience uses, because uh, that gives us a sign that something you uh, we said really resonated with you and you enjoyed something. This is all for the housekeeping, and with this in mind, it is my pleasure to introduce on this stage our special guest, Kevin Mason, director at Studio Workflow, an incredible professional when it comes to imagery and visuals that are used in e-commerce and beyond. So, Kevin, join me on stage. Hello. Hello, thank you. Thank you for the nice introduction and welcome. <laughs> of course, it's such a pleasure to have you with us. Uh, again, I would say, after two flow events in person, now we also will have a digital event together with you. Um, so, without any further ado, I suggest that we get started. And uh, just as in our report, I want to start with a few icebreaker questions that I will address both to the audience and Kevin also to you. So, to our audience, if you haven't started, uh, if you haven't joined Slido yet, this is your moment. And our first question for you to answer is, what kind of digital media do you display on your product detail pages? And exact same question, Kevin goes to you, and maybe not what you display, but what do you see in the industry as the key trend right now? As a trend, I, I, well, let, let me jump back a little bit. I've, I've got a, clients, I guess, that are kind of quite diverse and they display everything from, you know, fashion imagery, stills imagery to I work with kitchen brands that display kind of how to use tutorials and videos and so on. Um, and I guess one of the things that we're kind of looking at trending also at the minute is user generated content in terms of video and stills and imagery and how that also relates to the PDP, which I think we'll touch on a lot more in detail later. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and that confirms here we have one response, just stills imagery. Also, if anyone wants to chime in uh, on, on that end uh, on Slido or here in the chat, uh, feel free to do so. And that actually also resonates with uh, what we've seen uh, based on the results of our report. It was uh, the shots of um, products and uh, in some cases also lifestyle and editorial, but these were the ones that prevailed. Oh, we have here still some video. That is very interesting. Well, let's move to our next icebreaker question. And that one is, every production comes with a challenge. So what are the most significant challenges in creating product images? Kevin, what do you observe? Sure, I thought you were waiting for the audience <laughs> response. And, um, I mean, consistency and getting the brand story right, getting the brand voice right. And I think the biggest challenge with that is getting that idea of brand story and brand curation with, with time to online, which, which is a huge challenge. 
Yeah, that's uh, uh, like as you said, consistency, and that was also something that um, has come come up often in our survey. It was delivering consistently high quality of the images, uh, but also some of the challenges that the creative professionals we talked to have named are bottlenecks in post production because you can shoot everything, but when it goes to post, then the time to site really gets delayed, as uh, you've uh, very correctly pointed out, Kevin. And uh, also some of the other things that uh, were difficult was actually freeing up time of creatives, because there is a lot of things that need to be done, but where do you find that time? Uh, and as well, that was, um, yeah, we talked about the consistent high quality. So these were the top three that have come up in the report. And what we see here coming from the audience is getting stuck into the studio. That can definitely be an issue, especially over the past two years uh, with the supply chain issues, scaling and yeah, availability for the shooting. Can totally understand that. Well, now that uh, we are all warmed up, I suggest that uh, we dive into the trends. And we wanted to focus uh, today on the top three trend trends that uh, we have identified through the report. The first one may not be a surprise for anyone. It is video. Nothing groundbreaking, nothing earth shattering, uh, as video has been around for a while and uh, there have been a lot of talks about its importance. However, what we've observed uh, throughout the report and the survey is that we've arrived to a tipping point that the video really becomes the number one priority for creative professionals to display on product pages. And there is a, a strong business case for that, because according to some of the stats that uh, have been released, um, around 74% of uh, consumers would uh, buy the product after they watch the video, and 60% would rather watch a video than read the description. And the final stats that really makes and proves the point is that product pages that have a video on them convert 80% better. So with this killer stats in mind, I would like to ask our audience if you are already using video or not. Uh, it's a simple yes or no voting, so I would expect everybody to chime in. And uh, while you're doing so, Kevin, what do you see in terms of video in the industry? How do you see the brands that you work with utilizing it? I think for me at the minute, it's it's not a consistent experience yet. There's a lot of idea that video only works for sort of one category or video works if you've got the time to shoot it. And prioritizing stills is still a lot of the thing that happens within the studio. Um, I guess what we're kind of looking towards is when video does become a consistent experience, when you know every product range has video for it. And also whether that level of content of video moves across PDP in the way that it does across the social channels as well. Because for my clients in particular at the minute, they treat video very differently on a PDP to how they would treat it on you know social media channels. It's a very different experience. Yeah, and I'm sure that we'll touch upon that in just a little bit. Um, but also, what is your take on balancing images and videos, in particular on product uh, pages? How would you approach that? I think the question always has got to be, what adds the most value? Does video add, add value? And if so, how does it add value? And what kind of video is that going to be? Is it, you know, a 360? If we're talking on model fashion, is it, you know, a catwalk style video or someone just turning around and... If it's something like a technical garment, like a sports jacket, is there a video that can really show off the kind of technical abilities of that jacket? For me, I really think it's about providing value to the customer um, and a consistent way of delivering that message to them. Um, then the other thing I think that's a really big part of video, which we'll get on, is, is can it create a sense of, of community and customer trust, which is really, very really important. Yeah, that's very interesting. And um... It definitely overlaps with uh, what some of our speakers at the recent Flow Barcelona shared when we were talking about video that don't use video for the sake of using it. And because it is a trend everyone talks about, you need to think what is unique value that it delivers to your customer and how does it maybe display the garment, if in particular we're talking about the fashion, in a different way, something that the image can show and something that really adds value. 
And well, we have an uh, interesting uh, responses here. Actually, majority of uh, people that we have with us today are not using video on product pages or even within campaigns. So that is definitely a trend and uh, probably something uh, when we make a survey and this poll in a one year time, maybe the results will be different. I think just also jump in that I think it is really interesting to see where that trend does go, but also the difficulty of producing video. You know, do you produce video on a separate set? Do you move the model and the garment to that video set? There's lots of kind of logistic difficulties that, you know, probably popped up at the beginning of why people aren't necessarily using video also at this point. Right. And how, what's your take? Like how should uh, people approach starting with the video? Does it really, do you really need a separate studio? Do you really need to create it completely separately? I think there's definitely ways of, of creating a modular set that can do both things, but then you have to kind of rethink your lighting for stills so that you know that there's color consistency between uh, stills and video and that you've got a workflow that can allow stills and video to kind of exist within the same ecosystem. Um, ideally, yes, you would do that on the same set. If you can't, then it definitely makes sense to have a very streamlined specialist video set that is capable of consistent output all of the time. Um, one of the things you'll find then a lot of the time though is models are queuing to wait to get into the video set, which feels very slow and a sort of non-economical way of running a, a studio. So it's definitely challenging. Yeah, and I guess the the options, right? And they are, you can do this way or that way and you don't know what's right or what's wrong. That definitely makes the situation a little bit more challenging. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that testing period for, you know, when you test video, is the video great? You know, is it responding with the audience? And maybe the, the tests were just due because technically you couldn't achieve what you needed to. So there's a lot of kind of A-B testing that should be completed with video production as well. Yeah, 100%. And I'm sure that uh, that topic definitely deserves a separate webinar or maybe even a separate flow dedicated just to the video production because there is so much to uncover. But we promise that this one is going to be just 25 minutes. And to stay on time, I suggest we move to the next trend. And the second one is what we call branding and authenticity. And it stems from the ever increasing impact of uh, consumer behavior on everything that we do as brands. Um, all consumers, including myself and I would guess Kevin, you and everybody who is watching, kind of wants to purchase uh, and align themselves with the brands who share the same values and uh, not just share them in a passive way, but also kind of show them through everything what they've got through their website, through their messaging, and of course, through images and through the visuals. So we've seen and the um, creative uh, people who we've surveyed, they have seen a shift and demand for more value driven imagery in e commerce. And with that, I would like to ask our audience to vote once again, whether you have seen any shifts or whether you've adjusted your processes this year to make the imagery more authentic. And Kevin, for you, I've got a different question. And I know this is something that you're quite passionate about is how do brands actually translate their values through e-commerce imagery? Yeah, I think it's a really interesting question with this because I think, you know, where does it start and where does it stop? You know, what, what is the brand imagery and is it PDP or is it across all the channels? And how do you have sort of one tone of voice or multiple tones of voice that create the same sense of, of brand story? Um, I think that's one of the challenges right now because you have to keep production levels high within a studio and you have to have a lot of the time models that are very good at shooting and very adept at shooting kind of quite quickly, but actually you need authenticity and diversity in your model casting, et cetera. All of those things speak to brand story, but provide logistical differences, I guess, to kind of running a studio sometimes. Um, so I think it's a very interesting point for the industry right now. How do you get authenticity and still have a high production studio running at the same time? Right. And also, how do you like, how do you show authenticity or how do you translate your values through simple imagery, right? When we we're just talking about still shot of a product on a white background right so how do how do you approach that is it a mix of different content types is it a mix of different channels uh, through which the uh, kind of imagery is distributed 
Yeah, I think I think it's very challenging with kind of white background imagery, but also I think it's really important to then think, well, who are you representing? You know, what like I said, what is your model actually looking like? Who are they talking to? Are they part of your core customer base? I think one of the things you see, particularly with with Gen Z now, and is that they want to help inform the brand values. They don't want the brand values to talk to them. They want to be involved in that process. So how do you represent that across the the imagery that you produce and Obviously, with fashion and our model imagery, it's a lot more easy, I guess, um, and sustainable than it is with kind of product imagery. Um, but I guess it's also about speaking to what the customer really wants to know about your product and not necessarily what you want to show them, which may be different things. Yeah, that's also true. And do you think that kind of editing videos and mixing in some lifestyle and editorial images uh, on your product pages, does that help with... Uh, kind of being more authentic and delivering more to customer? I think the mix of lifestyle and white background PDP imagery can be really challenging because obviously if you, it depends how you're approaching the site, but if you, you go to the site from a browser and you get a mix of those imagery, the brand story can be kind of quite disconnected then. And I think then it's a challenge of saying, okay, well, what imagery does get lifestyle imagery and what just gets the PDP? And does it look like you're trading one product in a lesser way than the other? Um, I think it's, that in itself, that curation, especially curation of new in is, is a challenge in itself. But I definitely see a lot more brands that are getting more lifestyle or more user generated content and just dropping that into the PDP as well, for sure. Yeah, that's a very interesting um, approach, I would say. And I'm speaking purely from the customer perspective who spends a lot of time on um, the e-com websites, maybe more than I would like to admit. And yeah, definitely seeing user-generated content and the variety of it and uh, yeah, seeing how it is very true to life and diverse and different models uh, that are displayed um, kind of speaks to me quite a lot. Let's check what did our audience say on this question because I've seen there have been more answers. Yeah, so majority haven't adjusted their processes this year to make the imagery more authentic and some of you have well that's uh, quite interesting and um, yeah again I think will be interesting to compare that uh, after a year because uh, this is clearly something that uh, is a trend in the industry and uh, we'll be curious to see how that lands uh, on a wider scale. Well, and uh, with this in mind, I would love to move forward to our third and final trend for today, which we labeled as Gone Social. And I think the word social has already been said uh, in here, I think twice uh, within the past 20 minutes, because that is clearly around. And the mix of uh, new channels, new platforms, new content formats uh, from TikTok to Instagram, that's just uh, the reality already. And uh, creative professionals are tasked to create content that can be distributed uh, through new platforms uh, every single day. And uh, we actually have a question again to our audience uh, to vote yes or no. If you have experienced uh, the demand for more types of content, for more platforms to be produced, and I'm not going to ask uh, whether you ask to produce the, it on exact same budget or whether you're getting some extra resources, uh, but that would be also interesting to understand. And Kevin, for you, I have a slightly different question. Being social and kind of embracing this trend can mean not only posting on Instagram, but also a different approach to content. And I know from uh, your presentations at uh, Flow New York that you have uh, quite interesting and strong views about how the studio can play a role in brand becoming closer to their customers. So can you share a little bit more about it? Yeah, totally. I really feel we're kind of beginning to get to the point now where, like I said, Gen Z, obviously, they're a huge consumer group. They are wanting to be a part of content creation. And they're also a group that has grown up with digital content creation the whole time. So I think we should start to looking to the idea that studio is a place where your customer could almost just walk into it, feel a part of the brand, feel a part of the content creation. I think that it's beginning to get to a stage where we can think about studio differently. You know, uh, can stores be studios? Can they be digital hybrids? Can you go into a store and create kind of PDP imagery or at least imagery that's going to go on social? And how do we begin to kind of devise workflows that allow us to do that? Because one of the challenges the content studio has is 
a lot of people are obviously using influencers as one, sending that product out to influencers that that is challenging, getting the imagery back, you know, maybe it doesn't quite fit the brand story and so on. I see a lot of brands that are trying to bring influencers in and shoot in their style. That also doesn't necessarily kind of work. There's a bit of a clash there because those people are used to creating their own content. So there's there's an opportunity to create this sort of hybrid model, essentially. Um, the other thing is also, I think that we tend to kind of hide studios away and treat them very differently, a very separate part of the brand story. And, and it's a time to kind of really open it up and to really enhance the idea that once you step in, you should get a feeling of, who the brand is and, and how it talks to you all the way through the studio process. Um, it's very challenging, but I think that that's where we'll start to go because the boundaries are just shifting and they're, they're dissolving all the time in, in how we view content and especially how Gen Z view and consume content. Yeah, that's that's so true. And I think it goes hand in hand with that overall experiential trend uh, that is now kind of embra retail is embracing, uh, in particular with that shift to e-commerce where the stores are turning more into some sort of experiential platform where there are different activations, where there is a true interaction between uh, the customers and the brand itself. And that's actually where these values can be showcase where you can do anything from a concert to some master classes within the store and doing a kind of similar within the studio or bringing the studio to the store almost and getting the customers involved into the process uh, could definitely resonate very well. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the things there is if, if you think about a store, obviously you've got customers that are coming in, they're building their own fits with your product. There's there's a huge opportunity there to create content from, from that. Obviously, you know, with agreement. <laughs> um, but it's the idea that actually that customer would want to be a part of it. You know, they want to kind of cur curate your brand in different ways, show their looks, show how they use the product. And there's definitely an opportunity to really build on that for some some exciting brands right now. Yeah. And I would imagine it's it's pretty interesting to observe that as well from like creative perspective, from stylist perspective, from photography, what do consumers actually create with your brand and how do they, what do they make out of it? Cause like every person is different and uh, like the way of thinking and that just gives you so much possibility to like research and get inspired as well for further, like more, um, global brand campaigns as well because you can actually test and try it and learn from your consumer right on the spot yeah, yeah absolutely and one of the last things i'd add on that that obviously within a studio the stylists have you know styling guide and they have brand adjacency rules and so on that it's applicable to a studio and it makes sense but it doesn't make sense to a customer a customer doesn't think that way they'll mix brands together and they'll kind of do things that a stylist may want to do but doesn't have the freedom to do and that can be an exciting opportunity for brands to begin to show that also yeah, and for the stylist to prove the point that they were right. <laughs> sure. Uh, awesome. Well, I would definitely, if I were, you know, a customer of a brand that I like, and I heard that this is what is going to be happening at the store. I mean, I would be the first one to join the waiting line in there, and because that that's a fascinating process. You kind of bring the behind the scenes in front, and uh, your customer is your co-creator. That's definitely the trend I would love to see happening more and more um, with the brands that uh, I personally feel loyal to. And let's see what our viewers have said, whether they have experienced demand for more types of content. Well, they 100% yes. Yeah, I think everyone felt how they are tasked with creating more and more. Um, well, that is, uh, it, that is, I guess, the response that we anticipated. And as we come to the end of this webinar, there is one more question that I would like to address both to everybody watching and Kevin to you is what other trends do you expect to influence our industry next year? Outside of what we talked about, what else do you think will be happening? So please drop your answers on Slido and Kevin, what's your take on this? Again, I'm going to kind of come back to the idea that Gen Z are really shaping this market. And so one of the things I think that will just grow and grow is the idea of, of live imagery, um, the idea of live interaction between the customer and the brand as well. And something that you mentioned with the behind the scenes, you know, that potentially is a lot more interesting to your customer. And I think we're going to see a lot of more of that imagery and a lot more of that idea of content creation behind the scenes, less gatekeeping from brands. I think that's really important. It's something that 
particularly again, Gen Z want to feel a part of, they want to feel a part of the brand itself, but the idea that they're not excluded and brands have been very keen to kind of be gatekeepers for a long time. And I think that this disruptive field that's coming will, will be one of the biggest trends in, in the coming years or the next year as well. Um, the last thing also, it kind of touches on the authenticity thing because I think that you can't fake that and you need to go to your audience and see how they want to be talked to and discussed with. And I think that authentic nature of imagery is gonna keep coming across and more and more authentic content creation, which one of the interesting things with the poll is that people are being asked, they've just said, okay, yes, we're being asked for loads of different types of content and it's changed. But the answer to the authenticity poll surprised me a little bit. So I would challenge that and say, you know, if you're being asked for more content, it has to be authentic content that's being created. That's that's one of the ways that we really need to move forward. Oh, I love it. You're leaving our audience with a home task to <laughs> think about not just how you create more types of content, but how you also translate and bring more authenticity to it. Uh, let's have a look at uh, what our listeners think about uh, the next trends that there will be. Well, I think that goes hand in hand with what you've just said, the natural and real imagery, less retouched, and even more video. Well, I think that's for sure, and will be exciting to see what will be the ways that brands uh, follow these trends and uh, what we'll be able to see. I'm both excited for myself as a customer uh, to see more and more coming, but also as uh, now being part of uh, this creative industry, I'm really excited to see how how people will embrace it and uh, what uh, we'll come up with. So, well, Kevin, I want to thank you for this conversation that has just gone by in a second, even though it's been 27 minutes. Thanks a lot for quickly. taking time and uh, sharing your expertise and your thoughts with us. And also thank you so much for everybody who joined us today, who listened and participated in the polls. That's been a pleasure. And uh, if you would like to check out our full version of the e-commerce visual trend report, I'm dropping the link to it in the chat right now. But also, if you would like to discuss more trends and the opportunities that our industry is facing next year, face to face, you can join us at Flow Copenhagen on November 29th. Uh, it will be a great event where we will focus uh, about the future trends and see what else is coming up and what else will in will influence our industry. I hope to see everyone who joined us today there. And Kevin, I hope to see you there as well. Let's see if the stars align and you will be able to join us. Thank you so much and goodbye.